Glasswire is the ultimate firewall and network monitoring software. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Morty here, back with another video, and Zen APUs are here, and thus so are their motherboards. And whilst our Zen second generation CPUs are sort of stuck up in editing somewhere, today we're going to be taking a look at the Gigabyte X470 Aurorus Ultra Gaming Motherboard, a jam-packed motherboard with a top-notch price tag. Let's go ahead and have a look. Now, first impressions wise, man, is this guy absolutely striking. When it's powered off, we do get ourselves a sleek black and silver finish with orange accents and whilst they are definitely fine some people may not be the biggest fans of those orange accents as they may not go with all systems but we'll touch on that in just a moment we also do get a couple LEDs going on here however this isn't as LED jam-packed as what we've seen in previous generations or on other SKUs of motherboards these LEDs are thankfully controlled through software so if you're like me you can quickly power them right off or if you want to sync them up to the rest of the LEDs in your system thanks to the fact that this motherboard offers LED headers and LED software you can control everything to sync up and actually run not too bad. As we're taking a look at the visuals, let's keep it right here with this board offering a very busy looking design, but actually for good reason. With this cool Aurorus Angry Bird logo thing on the PCB, it actually has a very striking first appearance. Not to mention there's also two massive uh, heat sink and also two chipset heat sinks, so when it comes to cooling, this guy definitely stands out. Something that also too stands out to me is that VRM and rear I area and whilst the rear IO is somewhere hidden under there there's a whole bunch of covers and a number of shields and heat sinks over this guy for a tough and clean looking aesthetic you don't see the top of the ugly IO which has plagued a lot of lower and mid to end motherboards which is a really nice thing to see nice covers and it actually looks really really sweet the rest of the design is pretty typical for a top tier motherboard with the aim for socket up front and also do mounting hardware to go along with that four black ram dims that do not light up so do keep in mind if you do want some LED LED lighting in your RAM dims, uh, jump over to one of the other offerings out of Gigabyte. But let's jump back to that power delivery system, as I did mention it before, but we better take a closer look. Here we've seen that Gigabyte uses an 8 plus 3 hybrid digital power design, which basically, if you put it into simple English, is going to offer rock solid performance and a really sweet power delivery system for those who want to overclock and get some really accurate control over their power requirements. As some of us may know, if you go ahead and apply too much CPU power, you're going to blow it up, which is not really great. So Gigabyte's implemented a really nice power delivery system. On top of this, they've also too added things like an M.2 heatsink that actually works, as so I'm told, although I haven't really noticed the difference with or without it. But it does go ahead and cover up your ugly M.2 SSD, if that is something that you do have. And then also too, we get ourselves a USB front panel header. This is something that I've been hoping for quite some time and wish more motherboard manufacturers implemented it. Sure, not exactly all cases use USB-C yet, and not many people people use USB-C yet, but it does need to start somewhere, so seeing that USB-C headers are on a board, really not too bad. And also too, jumping around to the back of the motherboard, we also do get USB-C on the rear I.O., which is again, really, really sweet. And whilst we're around the back here, in terms of rear I.O., we also do find ourselves a pretty interesting set of USB ports. These guys are known as DAC Up 2, which is really kind of weird, I've never seen them before, but apparently these are really great for people who use super long USB cables or for VR players. We all know if you are playing with VR headsets, the cables are going to have to be relatively long, and when they are relatively long, you do get things like voltage drops, signal degradation, and it does go downhill with that. What DAC Up 2 allows you to do is actually counter those voltage drops and things like that. So essentially, they're special ports designed for your VR and longer USB connections. So some of us will need it. I personally haven't noticed a difference on any other motherboard, but if you are going for long distances, definitely use these ports. In terms of other things around back, we also do get LAN powered by the Intel GBE LAN hardware, and also too, we have Realtek back at it again with the ALC1220 codec. This is a little bit of an older codec, but still boss nevertheless, and has been tried and tested in many previous generations. Spec-wise, if it's not obvious enough at this point, we are looking at a 4 RAM DIMM compatible setup with support for DDR4 up to 64GB in dual channel mode, and also too, we got metal reinforced 
Atlas PCI Express slots, which will also do support SLI and Crossfire. And also do we get ourselves some 1X slots and a PCIe slot for maximum PCI connectivity. Now again, those fans of SLI and Crossfire can rejoice thanks to the fact that this motherboard supports both technologies and both two-way configurations and obviously single cards. And rounding out the spec-wise, we get ourselves six SATA ports and also two, obviously, the X470 chipset, which will allow you to overclock on all supported unlocked CPUs. But jumping into actually building with this guy, what is it like? Well, in short, really sweet actually. Whilst you never actually should go bending a motherboard, actual flex on this guy was very minimal and the overall fit and finish was definitely on point. Which should be expected, for the price point it definitely comes in. So when I was plugging in surface mount components, SATA ports didn't wiggle around too much, 24 pin definitely seated in very well, overall a nice fit and finish. The M.2 heatsink was definitely great but it did manage to cut open the top of my finger by accidentally moving my hand over it. It's definitely not a design flaw, more of user error than the heatsink itself, but definitely something that did happen to me, kind of hurt a little bit. And also to mostly everything else just kind of slotted into place. Definitely when you start building with high end motherboards, things just seem to work and they work really well. And this motherboard is definitely no exception. One sad thing that is missing, unfortunately, is the single tab RAM dim design. A few years ago, most mid to high end motherboards were all rocking single tab RAM dims. Now, what do I mean by this is, well, essentially a lot of older motherboards, well, getting older now, wow, um, but essentially what they did to go ahead and offer you is the single tab up the top, which will allow you to quickly release and install new RAM. Motherboards these days seem to be coming out with tabs on the bottom and the top. Personally, I don't see much of a difference between the two, but it's just one of those convenience factors that is no longer available. For instance, my X99 motherboard that came out quite a few years ago now features this single tab design. It is so nice to use, makes RAM swaps super easy. Sure, we're not swapping RAM in and out every single day, but it's just one of those building conveniences that isn't there anymore. Sadly though, most modern motherboards, including this one right here, are missing out on this feature. And also too, I guess, fan connectivity was definitely on point when connecting up all the fans to the motherboard. We found ourselves three in the top right hand corner, great for three up the top of your case or in the front of your case, a super stealth one next to the EPS power connector, one in the middle on the right hand side of the motherboard, and also two, one down the bottom if you want to do some basement style cooling fans. Overall though, chances are if you you are building with this motherboard, you're probably going to be running some sort of custom LED controller hardware anyway, so you're probably not necessarily relying on the motherboard for its RAM headers, or rather its uh, fan headers, but it's still there nevertheless if you did want to plug straight into the motherboard. Now the BIOS is something that I don't usually touch on too much because it's pretty much of a much when it comes to BIOSes these days, nice graphical user interfaces, but when it comes to the Gigabyte BIOSes, they're usually pretty much what you expect everything falls in, but they did add features like at BIOS and also to 3D OSD, which allows you to view BIOS level settings and monitor your system through the Windows operating system. So you don't have to be in the BIOS to change BIOS grade settings, which I thought was super neat. So overall, this board actually sounds pretty good. Great features, great build, what's not to like? Well, whilst there are some nice things, it was nice to see things like right angle SATA, this guy is a top tier motherboard and personally I would expect a right angle power connector for the EPS and also to 24 pin. It's just one of those features that we see on some super premium stuff that doesn't exactly make it to the more general premium stuff. Again, for me, I love right angle connectors down the right hand side of my motherboard and I don't know why more manufacturers don't do this. So that's one of my complaints from me. The M.2 heatsink is definitely epic, but it does leave the second slot not having anything there. It's just kind of all by itself and also to the Orange accents are definitely to my taste and I really like those orange accents, but I do know that not everyone will like them and also too, they won't fit with all builds out there. And if we're really getting nitpicky at this point, I wish the board was a little bit more matte. But honestly, my complaints aren't really that bad at all. I mean, orange accents that are to my taste that might not be for everyone isn't really too much of a complaint in my view. So all in all, the Aurorus X470 Ultra Gaming Motherboard is a sweet little package. My top tier motherboard here in 2018 with a price tag just under 280 Australian dollars. It delivers a lot, but has a price tag to back it up. Visuals are definitely on point, and the orange accents, whilst won't be to everybody's taste, are definitely to my taste. And whilst there isn't a whole ton of RGB LEDs integrated on the board, it does have quite a few RGB uh, headers on this guy, so you could easily hook up your own LEDs. Whilst I do have my complaints, honestly, they're really overlooked, especially by the amount of features this guy adds, and really makes a solid package. But let me know what you think 
rating of the new X470 boards down in the comments sections. Do you like this particular guy or what would you go for otherwise? Anyway guys, if you want to check this motherboard out, I've left links in that description box. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.